Okay, good morning, everybody. It looks like we're live. Yeah. Bill Lester here with Hernando County Extension Service. And we were having a couple of little freezing issues a few minutes ago, so hopefully everything will go just fine today. If we do freeze up, just be patient. We'll probably unfreeze, hopefully. We'll fall out, yeah. Something will happen. Mm -hmm. It always does. <laughs> but I'm here today with my regular co-host, Lily Browning, who is the Hernando County Florida Friendly Landscape Coordinator. Good morning, Lily. Okay, good morning. How are you, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> I was pondering that title you were giving me. <laughs> Sorry, I guess we're both a little little blurry today. And it's not even Monday, is it? This is today's Thursday, right? I think it's the weather. I think so. Yeah. And I'm looking out my window and it is bright and sunny out there. Oh now. good, yay. Yeah. yeah For we a had... few minutes at least. All day yesterday was actually, you know, the rain is good. We need the rain, too. So it was a nice rainy day all day. It was rainy this morning. Um, yes, it was. Like I was saying earlier, I just planted the first of my fall vegetable garden seeds last weekend and watered them. But when it's really sunny and dry, it's really hard to keep them watered well enough to get them to sprout. But all this rain we've gotten for the last, what is it, two days at this point? Mm -hmm. They're set. My garden's good and wet. I planted yellow beans, yellow wax beans. They're, they grow just like green beans do, but I like the yellow ones. My mm -hmm. wife likes the green ones, so I'm going to grow both. And uh, have a colorful the, plate. Yes, and the snow peas for the winter because that's one of her favorites. The flat, I like the flat potted snow peas, and she likes the round one the round edible pot piece mm -hmm. so hopefully they're okay. going to germinate and come up well as um i had a question for you before we started so i'll bring it out okay. now too um uh i even shared uh tia from orange county i shared this on my facebook page she was talking about what to start as far as vegetables now and last week you know you had mentioned more uh, another warm season crop near tomatoes you know green beans like you've been talking about and all that but tia was discussing cool season crops and i know orlando is pretty much the same uh zone horticultural zone as we are so can you explain um how come she's talking about winter crops and you're talking about warm season crops what is the difference there well right now we have the big overlap. So right now, today, and this is September 2nd, mm -hmm. you can go out and plant warm season vegetables. You can plant green beans or yellow beans if you prefer, or purple beans. Um, if you had tomato transplants already up and going, you could plant them. You can plant cucumbers, yellow squash, and zucchini squash. Good luck getting any because they are really hard to grow in the best of times. And this time of year, with it still being fairly warm and humid, you're gonna have a lot of disease problems, but you could plant them right now. But you could also start planting some of your cool season crops. I like to wait until the beginning of October to actually be putting them in the ground. So even though technically you could start lettuce, different various greens, mustard greens, collard greens, even carrots and radishes and turnips, you can start them now in the garden. I prefer to wait until at least beginning of October. Let it get at least a tiny bit cooler. I think she was starting seeds. So that's the difference as well. Yes. If you're putting seeds in the ground, out in your backyard, in the garden, right now, there's not a whole lot that you can't plant. <laughs> from okay. seed. You really don't want to start okra. Because even though it's hot right now and okra will come up just fine, it's going to get cool eventually. And okra is something that you grow during the heat of summer because it likes the really hot weather. You can go out there and really try planting darn near anything right now. Spinach. Don't plant spinach until it gets legitimately cool. If the weather is too warm, it won't even sprout. So you're just kind of wasting your seeds. Carrots don't sprout really well if it's still really hot. Other than that, you could go out and technically, if you look at the UF guides for the months when you can grow these different various things, 
August and September is down as a potential month for almost everything. Not quite, but almost everything. So it's a great overlap time. Yes, it is. So what yeah. I do right now, if there's any warm season things I want to start and put in the ground, I need to get on that and do that right now. And then I start thinking about the cool season things. And like, for example, the section where I'm putting the uh, uh, green beans and yellow beans in. Mm -hmm. Soon I'm going to start broccoli seeds in little containers so that I'm going to have nice big transplants. When the beans are done in a few months and they come out, broccoli is going to go right in behind them. And that's what you want to try to do all winter to keep something in the garden at all times. That way you're going to get the maximum amount of food out of your garden. So this Labor Day weekend is the perfect time if you haven't started to get yes. started. Yeah, and I'm planning some, I don't know, we've got Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, but one of those days I'm going to spend a day out in the vegetable garden getting it pulled together. Well, and even when you mentioned um, the past day or yesterday or so, temps were quote, quote, down. I think they stayed in the 80s, but because it rained, but my lord was it muggy out there you could barely walk through the air so and that is going to affect your plants with all the different fungus and things that they could get it does so things that are difficult to grow because of diseases are still difficult to grow right now in theory they're a lot easier to grow during the winter because the weather gets less favorable for those fungal diseases during the winter it's going to rain less, the humidity is going to drop, temperature is going to drop some, and you're going to have far fewer disease problems in the middle of winter. So Lee down in Broward County put in some pole beans and tomatoes, and now is a fine time of year for them. Here in Hernando County, planting pole beans might be a little bit of a problem because they take longer to grow, mm -hmm. and you may be bumping into like really cold time of year. Bush beans, which is what I normally grow, grow faster. And I know that if I plant if I plant the rest of them this weekend, they'll come up, they'll grow. I'll get my bush beans all before the first freeze or frost here in Hernando. Brown you, rarely gets freezes or frost down there. They're good. Where do you get your plants? Oh, I buy I start everything from seed. I never buy plants. Okay, so you where do you get the seeds? You online. Okay. <laughs> There's a, there's a lot of different legitimate goo companies online. Um, the tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and a few other seeds I get from, I think it's Tomato Growers. It's a very nice family-run company out of um, Fort Myers, I think, mm -hmm. in Florida. It's a Florida company. And there's a lot of uh, park seeds is really large, and they've been around for many years. Burpees, a number of others. I just order the seeds online, and even if I'm growing transplants, I plant my own. Because if you go to the store, they only have a couple different kinds of tomatoes. If you look through a good catalog, they have hundreds of kinds of tomatoes. But so you want to make sure you get them to grow here in Central Florida. Yes, and that's just from from experience, from hit or miss experimentation. So they will say zone nine A on them. Or it grows eight through eleven, or something like that. For tomatoes, no. Tomatoes will, in theory, grow everywhere, but you learn from experience which ones grow well here and which ones don't. Right. Like for example, black cherry tomatoes are so great cherry tomatoes, tasting yeah. tomatoes. They are little disease magnets, and they would always die from diseases very quickly. There's another one called um, orange sunshine, I think which is an orange cherry tomato, and they're really tasty tomatoes, and the plants grow just great. So I always grow them when I'm growing tomatoes. So you, you, you develop your favorites and the ones you've learned not to, not to try doing again. So let's see, we got a couple more good mornings, everybody. Mm -hmm. Good morning, and lady. To, my Good morning, gardener brother. is amazing for seeds. Sure. I mean, they sell seeds at stores. You can buy them at the big box stores like a Lowe's or Home Depot. You can look online. Um, individuals, a lot of times, will sell seeds. So, you know, buyer beware. 
like with anything that you buy online, be careful who you're buying it from. But I bought from a number of different large companies, and you know, it really is the easiest way. I can sit here and go to their website, order them up, and in a couple of days they show up in the mail. Cool. Doesn't get any mm -hmm. easier than that. Yep. Oh, we do have some news to share. We should have brought up yes, the picture um, about your garden out front. Oh, yeah, well, I, I thought you were going to mention that, uh, and I'm not sure if he's even on here or not, our regular viewer, Austin, emailed me earlier, and today is his birthday, so yeah. happy birthday, Austin. Happy birthday, Austin, up in Green Bay, yeah. Yeah, way up north. He's actually um, going to start having fall soon. We've got a long time before we need <laughs> worry about that. leaves are going to turn color and fall off, and it's going to be fall really soon up there. Yeah. Not so much here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yes, the other day at our office here at Hernando County Extension, we have demonstration gardens out front. And master gardeners, our master gardener volunteer, Alice Smith, who is very knowledgeable with Florida native plants, took charge and worked with a number of other master gardeners to redo the flower beds. She's put in a variety of different Florida native plants and they have signs on them so the people when they come by and look at them you know what is what and our county's florida friendly landscape coordinator lily came by the other day and gave us a sign for that um if you give me a second i'll go ahead and i'll pull it's that up on well. facebook yep um you can find all sorts of information about your gardens on your facebook and how it was put together and everything but um it qualifies as a Florida friendly certified landscape. And um, I use the form for municipal organizations uh, as a Florida friendly certified landscape for yours. Um, anybody else can, as a homeowner, um, can apply, if you want to put it that way, for to um, be certified as a Florida friendly landscape. Um, we have two, uh, master gardeners. Alice was one of them, you know, at, at her home where she has probably 90%. Oh, uh, great. Um, <laughs> there's um, Lily placing the sign right out front in the garden out in front of the building yeah. here. And with that, I would like to extend a special thanks to the photographer, Teresa, because she did a real good job of making me look a little bit thinner than I am. So I do appreciate that. But um, She does is, all my camera work too. And you know what? I wouldn't make it through the day at work without Teresa. So. Yes. Um, I look like a real estate agent here, but actually. I, <laughs> We're not for sale. No. Which is Florida friendly here. Yes. This is the sign that says they are. This is a certified Florida friendly landscape. If you um, have a home here in Hernando County, um, I cannot speak to whether or not the other counties are currently active in um, promoting these landscapes, but they may be. Check with your, most likely your county extension office, check with them, find out if, you know, they have people going out certifying yards as Florida friendly. To the people here in Hernando County, um, I can tell you that We've restarted up the program, but I'm not going out to see anybody in the month of September. <laughs> We've kind of, um, you know, made some COVID protocol so that um, I'm not having a lot of face-to-face -face meetings um, with the public right now, just to be safe for everybody. Then I'm on, on um, I'll be going up to see a grandbaby the first two weeks in October, so... It'll be mid-October at least before I can really come to your house. Um, but contact me in the meantime because there's a checklist and it's a pretty long, big checklist that the University of Florida has put together. So you can go over it and determine, do I check all, you don't have to check all of the boxes, enough of the boxes, you know, to get your right amount of points to be certified as Florida friendly. I can tell you right now, if you have an invasive species that you're in love with and refuse to get rid of, you know, you're not gonna qualify. <laughs> um, but there, 
Uh, one thing you could use it for is also just like a wish list or I want to strive for this. So you can email me and Dr. Lester has my email up right there. He, yes, so, I do. So we can anticipate each other's <laughs> actions now at Lily B L I L L two L's in the middle. Y V at Hernando County us. And Sam, I think I might have a Florida friendly yard or I would like to strive towards it and I'll send you the link so you can go over the checklist and then, you know, stay in contact with me if you have any questions and eventually I'll come out um, and do the evaluation. It's not hard. It doesn't hurt. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, and if you, this is just for Hernando County. I can't, I can't go to anybody else's County. We did find out that Frank Galdo, um, We'll do it in Pasco County. He's doing it there. So check with your county extension office. Um, it'll be the same program. It's just we can't we can't tread in each other's territories. <laughs> um, what else was I going to? Oh, if you are a customer of Hernando County Utilities, like Bill is, you know, you get your water from there. Yes, um, we do. Very, very good water too. Thank you. It is good water. Yes. Um, <laughs> It won taste tests in the past. But anyway, um, um, you will see by a one-time credit of $25 on your water bill for having your yard certified as Florida friendly. The two master gardeners who were recently certified, I forgot to tell them that, so it came as a surprise when I emailed them and said, hey, I just turned in the forms to billing. You're going to get a $25 credit. So that's kind of a nice surprise as far as that goes. If you have been certified in the past in Hernando County by me, by Sylvia, by John, by, you know, whomever, um, you got to do it again <laughs> because they made new rules and um, you do have to be recertified every two years. So we're kind of like starting from scratch. And I know the reason they did that. Yay, it is Austin's birthday. Yes. Yes, we already mentioned that, Austin. So we need to do it. The reason they did that is because before you could get certified and there was no time frame. So you could go by a house 10 years later where somebody left a sign up and there are different people who live there. And that yard is in no way representing a Florida friendly yard. So they did put some time frames. It's uh Two years, which seems a little, you know, short, but like the people who just had it done in two years, they can recertify themselves online just by filling out some paperwork in another two years. I'll have to come out again. So it's really four years. But basically anybody out there who has had it done in the past, let's do it all over again. <laughs> It'll be fun. So. So if they pass, then they get a sign. Uh, is there a cash prize also? I, I just told you there's a, if you're a customer of Hernando County Utilities, you get $25 credit on your water bill. You, you've been I after me for that good. cash prize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were hoping for a cash prize. No yeah. such luck. Sorry about that. Okay, we have people recommending other seed companies. And like I said, we don't have any one particular one. There's a number of them out there. Southern Exposure Seed Exchange has a lot of varieties of organic seeds. They also have a lot of varieties that are gonna do well in the South, because it takes a little experimentation to figure out what varieties are gonna grow best exactly where you live. Um, we have one here for Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. I've heard of them. So there's a lot of great companies out there. Back in the good old days, they would all put you on their mailing list and you you get a whole bunch of seed catalogs mm -hmm. every spring. They still do that. And I still enjoy looking through the old fashioned paper going through and looking at the pictures. And well, they send them out like in the fall so that if you're up north, you have all winter to dream through mm -hmm. them. <laughs> and then they send them out here over the winter because you need to order that stuff early in the spring. Right. <laughs> because the, the timing is different here. Mm -hmm. So whether you're looking through um, an actual paper catalog or looking online, a lot of different really good companies out there. Looks like Lee has figs. 
Yeah, Lee says a few weeks ago I mentioned that I have a fig tree plant that is a couple of years old with no fruit. Surprisingly, I saw a couple of figs on it yesterday. Just wanted to share them. That's great. You know, a lot of fruit trees, they fruit, they flower and fruit when they want to. <laughs> there is no specific rhyme or reason. I mean, we can't tell you, well, looking at it on this date or on this, even this year, it's going to start flowering and fruiting. Depends on a lot of different things, how happy it is, how well it's growing, how old it is. Fruit trees go through a juvenile period when they're young, and then they hit that age. Do they get an attitude then? Where they get over the attitude <laughs> and they flower and fruit, and then from there on they produce. So a lot of times patience is your friend. That's what I like to tell people. And what I've heard about figs is they generally have nematode issues. But the higher the pH, the nematodes that bother them um, don't do as well in a higher pH. So a lot of people sometimes recommend planting it kind of close to your house if your house is a block house, because that might leach out some um, lime and raise the pH a little bit and help you out there. Yeah, figs do have problems with nematodes and they also have problems with rust, rust fungus. And it's normal to get fig rust on your trees late in the summer. And if you turn the leaves over, it looks kind of orange, orange and fuzzy. It's going to turn, develop into brown and black spots on the leaves. Leaves are going to fall off prematurely. They normally fall off in the winter, but they're going to fall off a little bit too early. So a lot of times with figs, you need to be prepared to use a fungicide about three quarters of the way through summer, depending on exactly where you live. I like the brown turkey figs. They're good. Yeah, I like figs too. Mm -hmm. And Lee has it in a large pot. Figs can do very, very well in large containers. And that's really helpful for people that live farther north. If it's in a big pot, you can actually drag that in your garage or inside somewhere to stay warm in the winter. Okay. Looks like Austin's planning out his birthday dinner this evening. So he's going to get some merch. All righty. Oh, I have to leave you soon, uh, Bill. I have. Yes, uh, you do. So I have if just a few more minutes. Has any burning questions? Please go ahead and ask them right now, so as we can get them knocked out real quick. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm just going to start showing some of the important stuff here. If you go to HernandoExtension.com, you can see a full list of all of our classes that are coming up. As soon as we plan them out and put them online, boom, they're going to go on that list. And I have one coming up in a few weeks about how to grow vanilla orchids in Florida. That's where vanilla comes from. Vanilla, it's an orchid and it grows really tall and it flowers. And you get these little seed pods, and the seed pods, when you scrape them out, that is real vanilla flavoring worth a I, lot of money. I thought it came from my cabinet in a little brown bottle. No, that's where it comes from before it ends up in the little bottle. You know, I read online, and don't hold me to this, but if you grow your own vanilla and you want to make an extract out of it, do you know what you use? Because the extracts are very, very high in alcohol. Mm -hmm. You know what you use? For the extract, the liquid part? Vodka? I don't know. Very good. Vodka. Really? Yeah, you put it in vodka. And okay. you put it in a dark colored bottle in a closet and shake it, not like not violently, but just mix it a cup, you know, every day for a bit. And in a few weeks, you have your vanilla extract. Hmm. So just another use for vodka. There you go. <laughs> I saw something on Facebook yesterday about, you know, potatoes make vodka, they make this, they make that, they make the, and it says all the other vegetables really need to step up. <laughs> they do. <laughs> the sugar cane makes rum, so. Yeah. Yeah. Buddy wants to attend your vanilla class. Okay. So. Just go to HernandoExtension.com and it is listed on there. With a link, we do require pre-registration for that one, but it only takes a moment. So go to HerniaNewExtension.com. It's listed there. Click on the link. 
and you will be all set. It is, uh, let me check my schedule, uh, Tuesday, September 21st at 10 o'clock in the morning. Who would have thought we could grow vanilla here in Florida? They're Cocoa looking at it as, as a new commercial crop also. It does, it, South Florida grows really, really well. Mm -hmm. Here it's gonna be a little dicier in Central Florida. Um, Austin's going to have problems up in Green Bay. It's going to freeze solid. Well, in the you know, winter. Maybe in 30 years, he won't. Um, <laughs> can we grow cocoa beans here? Mm, oh, for chocolate? Yeah. You have to, that comes from the cacao tree. Cacao, okay. Which gets Good. a big fruit, and the seeds from it, when you dry them, are cocoa. Okay. <clears throat> They can grow that down in South Florida. Here, that's a little dicey. Well, see, I prefer <clears throat> chocolate to vanilla, so that's why I was asking. We can yeah, grow. No, no, no. You can, you can grow in your backyard the cacao for the chocolate. You can grow vanilla orchids, and you can grow uh, sugar cane. Okay. And you can, it'll be your entire health, little healthy garden. And Austin's talking about a brew. Yum. Another new crop here in Florida they're working on is hops, isn't it? Yes, they do grow hops here in Florida now because of the increase in the small craft breweries. They all need hops for the brewing process, and they always had to bring them in from outside of Florida. University figure, of Florida figure, why can't you grow them here? And you can. We do have, I think they're one of the biggest hops growers in the state of Florida right here in Hernando County. And they it had a very good harvest close. this year. Yes. I, Lily, I figured you'd be keeping on top of that one. I'm letting you stay up with um, Matt and hearing hearing all about it. But <laughs> I don't even drink beer at all. So. <laughs> but it is, it's interesting to me that that's a, you know, viable um, commercial crop here. Yes. Yes, they're always looking for things that maybe could do well here that they haven't looked at very closely in the past. Another one is papayas. They're looking closer at different varieties of papayas. Which ones are going to grow the best here? Which ones don't grow well here? Which ones taste the best? Which ones don't? There's an awful lot of variation in the world of papayas. And I'm hoping to have the speaker who's teaching about vanilla come back and talk about papayas on the month or two after that. So stay tuned. We have a great lineup of classes here. I'm getting hungry, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> See, I only picked the taste. You know, we're not having Brussels sprout classes here, <laughs> although they are good for you. And if you put enough cheese on Brussels sprouts, they're pretty good. I'm just afraid <laughs> nobody would show up for that class. Yes. Um, um, you have to go to your Facebook page to get that link, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I do. You give me a second here. If I make enough clicks. And we have classes continuously. Um, I have classes pretty much once a week. I did one yesterday with Frank Galdo from Pasco County on diverse lawn areas or how to break away from monotonous monocultures. Try to say that quickly, monotonous monocultures. Um, and it turned out really well, I think. I talked about those of us, like you and I, Bill, who don't live in a deed restricted community and each of us can have, we can, as long as we mow our lawn, the county is happy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, talked about letting the weeds come in and how they, they are actually good for a lawn as far as diversity goes. Um, but then he touched on maybe you live in a deed restricted community that is like, oh no, you've got to have this really nice lawn. And he brought in how you can bring the uh, pollinators in at other places, growing your plant beds, all of that. So I think it ended up being a pretty 
pretty interesting class and I have it on my Facebook page. You can either watch it through Facebook or it's already available as a YouTube link too. If you go to Hernando County Government YouTube, got to put government in there. You might end up someplace else. <laughs> um, I've got a ever expanding playlist. So, you know, um, if you want to ever jump down that rabbit hole or just watch it a little bit at a time, um, find a whole lot out about Florida friendly landscaping. Stay up all night long, just watching one video after another. Yeah, I don't know why anyone would want to listen to me that long, but the information, you know, um, sometimes when I do leave my dogs, I do put it on for them so, hey. the loop. so they, they hear my voice and they hear your voice. I've gotten very used to your voice too. And they just settle right down and go to sleep. And of course, if you follow us on Facebook, we have I have all my classes, all of Lily's classes, when she turns them into a video, all the links, all of it is all right there. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Dr. Lester, I need to get on my way. Unfortunately, I have another appointment um, that I need to attend to. So it was nice seeing you all and I'll let you answer Lee's question, but I have to go. OK, no problem. Thanks again, Lily. I will yep. talk to you really soon. Yep. And I'll wrap it up with answering Lee's question here, if I can, because mm -hmm. uh, I am not the vanilla expert yet. Um, Lee has a piece of the vanilla plant growing on the trunk of her mango tree. I left it in a pot. It had found its way up the tree. Should I remove it or leave it? Honestly, I'm not sure because vanilla, the vanilla orchid is a climbing, it's a vining plant. And I'm not sure if it is good to run it up a tree or not. You need to attend our class on um, growing vanilla, and because I know that that question is going to come up exactly how to how to go about growing it, and do you want to run it up a trellis? Do you want to run it up a tree? Are there advantages or disadvantages to either? I have several tall palm trees in my backyard, and if I can run vanilla orchid vine up the palm tree i will but i'm not sure if i can or not so lee go ahead and i did put it in the um uh comments here uh i think that it showed up on all the different uh, platforms that we're broadcasting live on i went ahead and put a link to that class so go ahead and sign up for it it is free and we'll cover everything you need to know about growing vanilla BJ, good morning. How are you? You're a little bit late to the clinic. Lily was here and had to go, so we have everybody kind of coming and going today. Uh, and BJ wants to know about the symptoms with the oak tree in my recent Facebook post. Yes, I had. And here I can go ahead and share that. Let me pull it up on our Facebook page here. Put that down. So let me go ahead and share this Facebook post from yesterday. This should be it. We got a call about a week or so ago. Uh, a family right here in Spring Hill is having problems with their oak tree. And they had been told months ago that the problem with the oak tree was um, that they had applied an herbicide or a weed killer to the turf grass underneath the tree, and the tree was having a bad reaction to it. Well, the tree was still looking pretty rough and pretty bad, so they contacted us again. I sent the question to a Facebook group that I'm a member of that people with the Florida Forest Service helped to run, people with the University of Florida helped to run, people around the country who are tree experts all helped to run. And it caught the attention of Jeff Eichward, who is with the uh, Florida Forest Service, who you see in the picture here. Um, and he asked a few questions about it. He said, you know, Hernando County isn't too far from Gainesville. I'm going to come down there and look at it. So yesterday he came down here in the light rain, but it wasn't too bad. 
looked at the tree. He took a bunch of samples back to Gainesville. They're going to have to culture those out in the lab because, BJ, the um, leaves were turning partly brown and dropping. The tree overall looked thin. And the funny thing is the small amounts of brand new growth on the ends, the tips of the branches, there was some new growth coming in, but it was very quickly starting to look very pale yellow and sickly. Jeff, who is an entomologist by trade, didn't see any insects on it. He saw oak tree lace bug, which is, you know, a native insect that you're going to find on oak trees. Not a huge problem, but it may, we're really not sure what it is. I had no idea what it was, but I'm not the tree expert here. Jeff is a tree expert, and he didn't know what it was either, so he took a bunch of branches. You can see him here with the um, pole clipper. He took them up back up to Gainesville, and he's going to let us know what it is probably early next week. So we're going to have to wait and see what that one is. But everybody keeps asking questions on the Facebook post about what is it? Can you post pictures? Um, and one thing that Jeff did show all of us, it was a learning experience for me too. I didn't even know that there was a native oak tree lace bug that if you turn over the leaf on your oak tree and you see little teeny tiny black spots on it, that's probably the lace bug. They feed on oak tree leaves and they cause very little damage. It's a native insect. They will knock a few leaves off and do a little bit of damage, but they don't kill trees. So this problem the tree is not dead it doesn't look well halfway between a dead oak tree and a very very healthy thriving oak tree so if it was herbicide damage it has not recovered and no herbicide has been applied since like february or so very early spring you'd think that it would have outgrown it by now but maybe not so we're gonna have to wait and see on that one Thank you for asking, and thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we're going to be wrapping it up pretty soon here. So if anybody has any earth-shaking questions you'd like to ask. Cindy has a question here. Is there a class about hurricane preparations for plants and the garden? I don't have any particular plants in mind, just general information, or let nature take its course. When a hurricane comes, nature is going to take its course one way or the other, whether you want it to or not. I know the palm trees need to be trimmed. Technically, they do and they don't. We do have a class that we did about preparing your trees for hurricanes. And, Cindy, if you want to shoot me an email, I can send you a link to that. If anybody else wants to watch that class, we did record it. And it is myself and Jamie Lynn, who is the new extension agent over in lake county who is also a tree expert she has all the international society of or bar culture uh certification so she knows more about trees than i do also gosh i'm surrounded by all these people that know more about trees than i do but she's a very she's a tree expert we do have a class that we did on how to prepare your trees for hurricanes and bad weather but we've never really done one on just general bushes, plants, things like that. We'll have to do that. I'll get with Lily and we'll play in a class about how to prepare your landscape in general for hurricanes and bad weather. Here, let me go ahead and throw my email back up here. But if you'd like the link to that class on preparing your trees and palm trees for hurricanes, shoot me an email. I'll send you the link back. Um, and you can watch that. And Cindy said that would be great. That's always really good advice. Some just basic things that you want to do before the big storm is coming to your house. Because I can tell you, if the weatherman says the hurricane is heading for you, it's going to be here tomorrow, it's too late to call your tree guy and have him trim it. Your tree guy is either not coming out after the winds start to pick up because nobody wants to climb a tree when it's really windy, or he's buried with business and you won't be able to get a hold of him until well after the storm has already gone through. So you want to contact your tree services and get all that work done 
well before hurricane season. The earlier, the better. So a little, little tip there. So if we have any other questions here, um, go ahead and try to ask them very quickly. Otherwise, we will be back here next Thursday morning at 10 a.m. I'll be here. Lily will be here. And we're going to try to start getting some regular guests on here because I'm kind of sort of free for the next few Thursdays. I can definitely plan on being here and having a guest join myself and Lily. I didn't even know if I was going to be here today. Technically, I'm on the hook for jury duty in Hernando County, but they didn't need me for today. So I'm here at the office and with you on the virtual plan clinic. So with that, everybody, thank you so much for joining us again. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to eat, send me an email with pictures and an explanation of what is going on. Otherwise, we will see everybody back here again next Thursday at 10 a.m. And we will see you then. So thanks again. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.